Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Today, it's all about the Reuben, and we've got some awesome corned beef. We're gonna show you how we cooked it, because we're gonna take the flavors from here and go to there. You gotta stay tuned. All right, I'm not bashing store-bought corned beef. There's only certain times of the year that we actually do this, and it happens to be this time of the year, right? It's corned beef season. Um, St. Patrick's Day is right around the corner, so you got your rye breads out there, you got your corned beef out there. This is not a knock to the people that use pressure cookers or slow cookers for the corned beef. But if you ever get one and want to try something different, you can either smoke it or you can braise it in the oven. And that's what I did. Watch this video right here. All right, we got about three to four cups of stock in the bottom. I've just got a mix of vegetables. I've got uh, one whole onion sliced large, uh, about six carrots, just slice in chunks, try to get equal pieces and about three quarters of a head of cabbage sliced in chunks as well. I've got the uh, little packet that comes in the corned beef and then I've just sprinkled that all on the bottom to dissolve it. And then on top, I just set the uh, corned beef right on top of that bed of vegetables and all it is is black pepper on top. The oven's set at 250. I'm gonna put aluminum foil on top of this. We're gonna cook it until this is absolutely fork tender, refrigerate overnight, and that's how we're gonna get that bad A Big old Reuben. All right, you see what I'm saying? Look, all those flavors, the vegetables get kind of like roasted, but they absorb that flavor just like you would in a crock pot. But the difference is the corned beef. You treat the corned beef just like you would a brisket. Oh God, and it is so good. So I've only done pepper on the top and my wife can attest that we love the fat from a pork butt. It's almost like fat candy, right? We, and we it love renders the fat out from any meat. Well, I guess Let's that's just true. be real. Because why? <laughs> fat, fat is, is flavor. flavor. <laughs> All right. This is no different. So this is what we had left over from yesterday. You guys know that my daughters are extremely picky when it comes to food. And this is no different. And they both enjoyed it very well. So we cooked it 250, brung it up to like 275. We ended up cooking it for about six and a half to seven hours, let it rest, all that junk. But this is why we do it. And what was the temp that we cooked it to internally? 190. 190. 190. It actually rose about 192 while I was resting somewhere through there. There's certain things at certain times of the year that we go all out for because we wait for it each year, and this is no different. I don't know what we're more excited about, to eat the actual corned beef and cabbage or to eat the Reuben. But today it's about the Reuben, and I'm pumped. You ready? Yep. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm gonna hand shave this. We got a flat top on. Let's go over a list of ingredients. Some Swiss cheese, your standard deli rye bread, some Thousand Island dressing. I know it's cheating, but we like to add horseradish for our kick and just your standard sauerkraut. I don't know what the correct ratio is about meat to sauce to cheese ratio, but whatever we do is obnoxious. I like the sauce and I like the cheese, so that's what we're gonna do. All right. Now they got our corned beef shaved. This is why I get so excited. This is the stuff that you can't get from the market. I'm not saying you shouldn't go all out and buy good corned beef, but I'm telling you, the fat just says, oh, stumbling over my work. I, my mouth is literally- Salivating. Moisting, yeah. I mean, it's just all over the place. God, I love it. All right, I'm not looking to cook this to death. I just want to get some heat on it to get the coldness off of it because it just came out of the refrigerator. If you decide to do this, one recommendation I have, you got to have the power, the willpower to let it rest overnight. If you try to do it the day of, the corned beef is just a little bit too tender. I know what you're thinking. How can you have too tender? But it doesn't slice really well. So if you just let it refrigerate overnight, it should be pretty good. I'm leaving that corned beef fat and juice on the griddle. That's also going to help toast our bread later. I don't even know if I need the bread. All right. <laughs> Really quickly, you can make your own or you can cheat like I do. Some good Thousand Island dressing. Like I said, I like to put horseradish in it. I love the kick. 
The idea comes from basically eating beef and horseradish together, whether you make a horseradish sauce with sour cream, stuff like that. So that was the whole idea behind it. And of course, some good sauerkraut. Just a quick little mix to incorporate all those flavors. All right, let's build, you ready? All right, butter on the griddle. Turn it down a little bit, let's turn some eyes off here. I got all four of them on low. I'm smoking, which means I've gotta be close to 400, a little bit over, so. I'm gonna turn my two ones off in the middle, keep my two ones on the right on low, because I do not. When, when you make a crispy sandwich and you like the texture to almost be fried versus like burnt and like oily, you gotta go slow. You gotta allow the butters and the oils to do its job. If you put it on there when it's too hot, it's gonna cook too fast and you're not gonna be able to melt that cheese. Nice base of the sauce. I like to do it on both sides. I love the sauce, I do not skimp on it. Same thing with the cheese. I do not skip on the cheese. If you're wondering why I took the sauerkraut out just really quick, cause I like the dry sauerkraut. I don't like it when it's all like just 100% moist. I think it just ruins the bread. So you allow it to drain itself and then just go from the top. And I like to do both sides on this as well. All right, that's done. Now we're coming back in here and loading this mammer jammer up. This is not a pretty sandwich, but it's gotta be one of the best tasting combinations of flavors there is. We've got our butter. I'm just gonna try to eyeball it really quick. Maybe a slab for each piece to help the butter not burn, just a little bit of avocado oil. It's gonna raise that smoke point. And you wanna create a nice landing pad. Mammoth sandwiches. Ridiculous. All right, so while these big old mammer jammers are cooking, I just wanna do kind of like a public service announcement. We've been going back and forth on this, so I think it's probably time to probably announce it to the public. Our idea is moving forward. We would like to start going live, but to go live, we'd like to have a certain day of the week that's very consistent so everybody can join in. Uh, I feel like our engagement uh, back and forth with the subscribers, with the viewers is very quick often. And it's, it's, it's very rewarding. Uh, even the bad comments we chuckle at. Um, so what we'd like to do is kind of hear from you guys that are even interested. Um, this is the thought process. Everything can change from here to there, but it's the idea. The idea is the first Tuesday of every month, let's just say six o'clock Eastern Standard Time. We go live for about an hour, hour and a half, somewhere through there. And it's either gonna be like a cook along where, where you guys have a poll on my Facebook group. You guys can check all that information out. We'll do a poll of like what we want to cook that week coming up. Whatever wins the poll, we'll cook. And once we announce it a couple days later, you guys will have time to do a shopping ingredients list to go along with what we're cooking. Then from there, once we start live, if you guys want to, you guys can cook along with us and kind of like create the same dish. I'd love to see what kind of dishes you guys are creating maybe kind of like an iron chef competition to where we have the same ingredients, but what you make could be completely different than what I make out of it. I think that's a great idea. And the other option is uh, basically just to get one-on-one -on -one with you guys, more access, more behind the scenes. There's a ton of comments about, can I do this? What if I do this? And I think that'd be an appropriate and perfect time for me to illustrate different ways that we could do stuff on the flat top grill one-on-one -on -one with you guys. So if you guys are interested, comment below. Let's try to get some feedback. Maybe the day changes, maybe the time changes, whatever needs to happen. But that's our goal, to go live. We're gonna start out once a month um, and we'll go from there. You ready? Yep. Let's get these bad boys turned.
All right. I don't know if they're ready. Oh yeah, they're ready. Oh yeah, they're golden brown. Oh yeah, look, the cheese is melting on the bottom, coming through. Oh geez. Woo, what a sandwich. Cause you know, if you do it one side, you gotta do it the other side. Butter, butter, and butter. Come back in with just a touch of oil. I don't think we have to worry about it burning. So I won't put much down. You guys see how light my butter's melting? Because these eyes right here are off. Let's see if I can do this without making a mess. <laughs> Test your skills. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, babe. All right, there you go, guys. Simple and easy. You guys hear that crust? That looks good. I mean, if that's not a mammer jammer, maybe that's what my restaurant's going to be called. Mammer jammer. Home, home of the mammer jammer. What's that? Anything and everything. You excited? I'm excited. Cool. Look at all the fat from the, look at all how moist that corned beef is. Mix in with a double sauce, double cheese, double crowded, double unlocked jawed. <laughs> Double paper towel to wipe your I was going to say, this is when I need that paper towel bib. You know if you know. Ha. Mm. There's not much surprises with this. You know exactly what you're going to get. We love everything completely overloaded. But that's how we like it. You guys make it the way you like it. You can go on our group. You can go on our Facebook page. Take a picture of what you've done. Tag us in it so we know where you're doing it. I just wanted you guys cooking. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. It's lunchtime. <laughs>